Okay. Any and all questions are uh, welcome. Music related, of course. And um, just give me a second while I, uh, there was a couple of questions that were asked before that I'm just going to pull up. I, I think there was actually, I remember two of them. One was um, something to do with string skipping. I'm not warmed up at all, but I'll try, I'll attempt to uh, demonstrate a couple of things. I don't really do that stuff as much as I used to, um, but, you know, it was more legato-ish, you know. <laughs> So rusty right now. But, but it was, you know, that kind of. So, I, you know, I kind of mix it up. I do a little bit of the guy, a little bit of, of the uh, alternate picking thing. But that last one, actually, I did was actually a cool little one. Um, three note per string thing. You've seen this before probably, but instead of doing, you know, you could do it, you know, just by doing, using the E string and the G string, you know. And just move up kind of like, just kind of make it more like a diminished type of thing, you know. Rusty, but you get the general idea of that. But that's, uh, I mean, there's so many things you can do with that because, you know, sky's the limit. I mean, that's more diminished, but uh, there's all kinds of different possibilities with that. But that's one cool little lick. And all I'm doing there with this particular example, um, I'm just starting on the 12th fret of the third string. So basically just, you know, 12, 14, 15, same thing on the first string. So... You know, repeating that, and then uh, and then shifting up a whole step and a half, step and a half to keep it diminished. So it's you can have all kinds of fun with that. The legato version of that too, you can just I think with that particular design, the, the, the uh, alternate picking seems to fit the bill a little bit better. But all I'm doing there is basically picking the first note of uh, my chain strings, and the rest of it is all reliant on the uh, left hand, you know, doing the pulls and uh, hammers and pulls. There you have it. And then as far as the arpeggiated stuff, um, I used to do a lot of that stuff earlier on in my playing, um, really more like the birth of all that stuff when you had players like um, Paul Gilbert and Vinnie Moore and these guys from like, you know, the mid to late 80s. Yngwie Malmsteen, of course, is the guy who started. So obviously starting with him, but he spawned that whole movement um, with those guitar players. They None of those players would have ever played the way they play had it not been for Yngwie, but... Um, so yeah, he started it, but yeah, he had all these other great players that I was really inspired by. I listened to a lot at the time and some of the stuff I still listen to. Um, and I was really more excited about it back then. Now it's, it just seems to be for me, uh, it's everybody's doing it. And I, I think for me, anything that's overdone or made too popular or whatever, I tend to lose my interest. And, um, so again, it was something I was, I was really more in interested in and doing 20 years ago and uh so it's kind of i've kind of let that go so but anyways i know a lot of people think that i do a lot of that stuff and i have done some you know there have been certain recordings you know like on the megadeth or king diamond albums that you know some of the times it's actually asked if i if i can do something like that it would that wouldn't normally be a situation where i would um just do it on my own but uh anyways cool stuff nonetheless it's just i'm not the, the right guy for that kind of stuff because i've kind of alienated it in, in recent years so and that was the two out of the three questions that I was given
but we can, you know, there's all kinds of different things. You know, don't be shy, guys. You know, I can't do this on my own. So if you got some questions, lay it on me. Okay, here's a good one. Is Dan here? I don't see. But anyways, um, I'm assuming it's just Andre and Dennis in the room here. Is that correct? That's all I'm seeing right now. But anyway, um, what's this? There's a lol in the room, Dennis, Damon. Yep, and Andre, yep. I need this. Can you still hear me, Steve? I sure can. Okay. This must be old then. Tw well, okay, because I got um, from Damon saying that he, he can't hear the audio. But that's uh, probably before it kicked in or something. But anyway, okay, cool. Uh, but here's a good question anyways um, about saying, you know, asking about the choral elements used in, in, play, in my playing. And, and commenting on, on uh, some of the stuff that Dave does. Basically, what, what that, that's a good example. Actually, I'll use Dave and, and certain parts of Megadeth songs for, uh, for the example of this kind of stuff. So basically, you got, of course, your typical bar chord, you know, which is used by everybody as a dog. But yeah, he'll do a lot of kind of, you know, those kind of things, you know. Like, what's a good example of a song? Um, the song uh, Holy Wars, I think. At the end, what's that riff? It goes. Uh... That one. That was what my role wasn't that. He would do that kind of thing there, and then our role was. But anyways, that particular part, um, it switched back and forth, alternate between just the regular G and F sharp bar chord. And then this, yeah, this inversion here where you go, it's it's three on the on the six and then two on the five. And then going down to the F sharp with the A sharp on the uh, fifth string, of course. So it's kind of cool, you know, it, it works, it's uh it's different. I think he initially was inspired by um, some old Merciful Fate stuff where they used to do a little bit of that. And I think that's where he kind of initially grabbed that from and um, threw it in many songs along uh, throughout his career um, going back that far you know it's one of the earlier albums and um, aside from that you know he uses a lot of chromatics there's a lot of chromatics in Megadeth music all kinds of stuff um, and then there's the spider chord which is uh, actually speaking of both there's uh, like the one in, in the song wake up dead <laughs> So, if you don't know what that is, when I got into the band, I had no idea because I learned it, you know, which you can play it that way, but I didn't know anything about this spider chord thing. And we we're in rehearsals, the very first ones. And um, we were talking about it. Even my guitar tech, Willie, was, yeah, yeah, the spider chord. I'm like, what the hell is that? So, and all it is basically is you're utilizing all four fingers in the left hand. And descending in a chromatic, most for the most part here type of manner, and um, and, and just basically just you're doing the, the whole economy of motion thing, you know, rather than jumping around, but like I showed you before, that's the way I learned it before I got into rehearsals at home. Um, we're utilizing all four fingers and trying to make um, you know things a little bit easier. 
I, which is actually at first when you try to do it, it's a little difficult. But once you get used to it, it's actually quite useful. But all it is is this, for this particular example from Wake Up Dead. So all I'm doing is using the, doing the bar chord like most people do, using their first and third fingers. I tend to use my fourth and, and, and the pinky, the fourth. The first and fourth. Um, I've always done that. I think just because of just because you can just you can do a lot of stretching without changing fingers. But anyway, you have to obviously in this particular situation use the first and third, which most people do anyway. And then after that, I'm accessing the C on the sixth string. So I'm going E, which is seven to nine from the fifth to the fourth, of course. The C up here, which is the eight to ten. So down chromatically E flat D C sharp so six to eight five to seven four to six from the fifth to the fourth string as you can see and at this point you know we're, we're heading in that direction here with those fingers uh, doing the top chords um, the second finger on the fifth fifth fret and forming the A bar chord and uh, the seventh fret of the uh, fifth string but I forgot. Um, but yeah, and it's obviously as you can see, you know, you're using the one and the three for the first chord, and then the leftover fingers that are dangling, which of course are the two and the pinky. So, and then it ends with a C, B, and A sharp. So, a little bit of chromatic movement, a little bit of the spider chord thing going on. That's actually, to be honest, that's probably one of my favorite, not just because it uses that, but that particular riff is one of my all-time favorite metal riffs, you know. So that's that's basically that, and you know what? It's 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 incomplete if I don't show you the whole riff because it all goes together as you see. So I'm going to just show it to you for fun. So it starts off with this chromatic thing, moving down from the C to the B to the A sharp. And what I'm doing is I'm picking that first bar chord and sliding to the next one, and then picking the last. So picking the C, sliding down to the B, and then picking the A sharp. So after that, we're doing a lot of palm muting. It's a lot of, you know, the, the change from, you know, going back and forth from open string palm muting to voicing these bar chords openly. So, so we're hitting the, the, uh, the six string, uh, two down strokes, palm muted. And then we're going to be uh, going back and forth quite a bit here from the A to the A sharp. So A sharp, and then one on the six, back to the A. Easier if I just show you slow. And then we access the G, the octave here. And how I'm voicing that is uh, the five and the seven. Five on the fourth and the seven on the three, and then I'm also accessing the um, the eighth fret on the on the uh, second string. 
to make that more of a fuller chord. More full G there. So. So. And then after that first time we're hitting the G, it just goes back to, sorry. And then, it's hard to do it out of sequence for me. That's it. So super slow. And that's pretty much that uh, for that uh, particular example of stuff that's used in Megadeth music. Can the guys see and hear me in here, Steve? I'm not hearing from anybody. Yep. Yep, I can hear you just fine, bud. All right. I do see a question for you, Glenn. Okay. It says, can you give some insight? This is from Al. It says, can you give some insight on gallop picking on the E string and then to chords and back? My pick tends to get stuck on the upstroke, and I can't seem to figure out how to get around it. Okay, now let me think of one. There's a lot. Um, what's a good one? Well, there's one. It's a little. This one's a little bit more involved. It's uh, another Megadeth song. Since I got my head there right now, is uh, the song "She Wolf." Um, and that goes. So up to tempo, obviously, it sounds like, you know, it's obviously, it's a little bit more difficult to, to master. Obviously, at that tempo, it's a pretty fast, uh, the tempo's pretty fast for doing that kind of stuff. But um, slow it down, like most things, is pretty damn easy. So... Now, this is not, of course, all, maybe I should find another one that's completely gallop because this is a mixture of downstrokes and, and alternate picking. But, you know, when you're doing most of the times with, I, I, I think, tend to um, end on a downstroke. First time I actually analyzed it. Um, what's another one? Give me a second, all right? That, I might be able to find a little bit easier and, and a more consistent gallop type of pattern that would be a better example. Just give me a minute to look around here. If anybody in the room can think of one, I'm all ears too. I know there's many, it's just it, it's not, nothing's coming to me right now for some stupid reason.
And also, are you talking about something, Steve? It just maybe get some clarification on um, what exactly we're talking about with that. Because I mean, you you have a gallop type of sequence like Barracuda, as we know, and then there's you know stuff that's obviously going to be more involved. So what what are we talking about exactly? So I well, can try I guess... to pinpoint you know a, a good example. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure because I mean, really, ideally, when you're doing a gallop pick. You know, you're playing a down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Right. Dum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum. right. So when one. the down comes up, you'd where at whatever chord you'd be going to, you'd start on the down anyway. Right. So, so that I'm not exactly sure, Al, what you might mean. You might want to elaborate on that. What's that? Um, Sorry. Yeah, as far as Al goes, I'm not sure. You know, the, the big thing, Al, is first of all, if, if you're if you're able to answer, can you actually do the gallop picking itself before even worrying about chords? Can you get the down, down, up, down, or are you getting stuck on that particular upstroke? So, yeah, because going to chords, it isn't really going to matter. It's it's just moving from the sixth string to maybe staying on the sixth string, maybe going to the fifth string or something. But you're yeah, because when you go, let's like, say the Barracuda example. Yep. You know, you're you're ending the galloping on the sixth string on an upstroke, and then the next one is the downstroke, which is where we're going to the chords, which is F sharp and G. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, you look at like you look at ninety percent of the Iron Maiden stuff that uses gallops, and you're still always. Oh yeah, actually, you know what? There you go, Steve. You just reminded me of something right there. The song uh, Power Slave, which is a lot of fun to play, play along with. That one's a total gallop thing, and you're you're basically it's 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 off of the A string and you're you're voicing the uh, the C and the uh, A sharp. So it's rusty there, but uh I'm, I'm actually, the way that one ends before we go into the chord is it actually ends, the Barracuda thing as we know ended on the upstroke, but this particular example, it ends, the galloping ends on a downstroke, which is why I was exaggerating that, where you can see that I'm actually hitting the bar chords with an upstroke. <laughs> And that's all that is. That might be a little bit better of an example for you because it's just all complete palm muting on the fifth string and all the bar chords and the uh, the single notes I was writing after that are all voiced openly. So it's down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, and then upstroke on the C bar chord, and the same thing when you go to the A sharp. So that would probably give you a little bit more insight to what's going on. But if you just practice it really slow, that's always the key, man. Just, you know, practice it real slow. Make sure you're playing it properly at a slow tempo. And as you increase the tempo to where it's supposed to be in the song or whatever you're trying to achieve, then make sure that you're playing it the same as when you were playing it slow. Because that's a, a, a lot of people make that mistake when they're trying to learn something, a particular technique, whether it's rhythm or solos. They have a tendency to do it right when they're playing it slow, but when they speed it up, it all changes. So that's the whole thing about just analyzing to make sure you're playing it the same way along the way as you're increasing tempo. So. When I do that upstroke, I'm just basically instead of doing, you know, you're typically if you hit the bar chord, you're gonna hit it from in this case, the five and the four, you're gonna hit the five first, or basically at the same time from the downstroke. But then I'm just with the upstroke, obviously I'm starting from the four. Obviously. 
So that's all that is. Pretty simple. Any more questions, Steve? No, I don't see any right now, Glenn. What's that? Not seeing any other questions right now, bud. Okay. Uh, hmm. Maybe just show them something super cool that, because we're, we're recording this anyway, so maybe show them just something that is a cool Glenn-ism, and we can end with that if you want to. Okay. I'm not sure what level I should demonstrate here at, but um, I'll just pick out a possible solo kind of sequence. It's uh, the design of this it just repeats this pattern throughout the strings, um, but it's a really cool um, exercise as well as, as just being a really cool lick for various reasons. I'll just show you what it looks like. I'll just pick anything here. <laughs> Basically, all this is is so. I'll just show you. As you see, as you can notice, just from me playing that, is it, it's this continuing pattern that flows through the whole thing. There's a little bit of shifting with the left hand, but the whole design is pretty much the same. So. So basically what it is, is a 12, 15, 14, 12 on the 5, 15 on the 6, 14 and 12 on the 5, 15 and 14 on the 5. So this is what you got. And just keep repeating that type of, same type of thing. So you've got the 12 and the 4, 15 on the 5. 14 and, and 12 and the 4. So. Sorry. After that, I'm shifting up to the, uh, the 17 and 16 on the 4th string. So. Just because it's easier for the left hand. So we got 17, 16. 14 on the 3, 17 on the 4, and then the 16 on the 3, 14, 3, and then the 17 and 16 on the 3. So all together. At that point, I'm shifting a little bit now uh, as I move into the second string notes. So. Um, so that's the 17, uh, yeah, no, 15 on the uh, 2, and then the 17 on the 3. And then the 17, 15 on the 2. 19, 17 on the 2. 15 on the, on the 1. 19 on the 2. 17, 15 on the 1. And then 19, 15 on the 1. So it's a really, it's a little bit more intricate. It's a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult than maybe some uh, patterns to get up to speed, but it's a really, really cool lick. You know, you play it a gazillion times and you'll get it. So. And what you call that, I have no idea. But it's kind of cool.
Rock and roll. <clears throat> cool. Thanks, buddy. Hey, you're welcome. I'm going back to the couch. <laughs> I hope you feel better, man. Yeah, I'll be okay by tomorrow. All right, awesome. All right, take care. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And thank you, Glenn, for showing us some really cool stuff and answering some questions. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, guys. All right, take care, everybody. See you later.